Hey guys, what's up? Spenny here. So bring you another Palantir video. In today's video, we're going to be going through Benzinga. They're talking about some key support levels for Palantir. I'll quickly skim through this article. They have some good points in it. And then I also want to get into what Janet Yellen said. So my last video, I touched on that Janet Yellen just said interest rates may need to rise to prevent the economy overheating. And what did we see happen? Well, we saw the stock market take another dip. If we actually zoom in here, you can see Palantir broke beneath this trend line. And this has been the whole story over the last few months, ever since about late January, where we fell from mid 40s. There's a lot of fear that there's too much inflation in the economy and the Fed needs to hike the rates to combat this. Now, I'm gonna take you guys through a quick history lesson so you understand why there's fear, but I'm also gonna to explain to you why this fear is irrational and it's nothing more than a knee-jerk reaction that's not going to last. So before we do get into this video, make sure to drop it a big thumbs up if you find it informative and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. So why do I think this is completely irrational how the market has been reacting the last few months? It's because this isn't the 1970s anymore. You see, in the 1970s, when we were taken off the gold standard, there was massive inflation. And that led to the United States government raising interest rates in the early 1980s. And interest rates in Canada were skyrocketing. They went up to 15%. Now, there's obviously people in the market now who are scared that if the Fed raises interest rates like back in the 80s, this is going to cause a recession like it did back then. But the reality is the government can't raise rates to 15%, 10%, not even 5% anymore. You see, the whole world is way too indebted for this to happen. If they raise rates this high, yes, it would crash the stock market, but it would also crash the entire economy in the United States. The government knows this and they know they can't do that. You see, there's too much household debt Every person who holds a mortgage would not be able to have a higher interest rate more than a few percent. Literally, if this went to five plus percent, most people would not be able to afford their houses, their car payments, anything they're financing would be too expensive for them. And this is the same thing with the government. The government has 28 trillion in debt now. They can't even afford a super high interest rate. So the reality is, Yes, we might see a hike in the interest rates, but it's probably going to be a one to 3% top hike in the interest rates. If they do any more, they're at risk of literally bankrupting most people in the United States and possibly the own government. So this isn't a situation where it was like in the 80s because of the amount of debt we have, we just can't have that much of a hike in the interest rates. So that's why I do think this is mostly just a knee-jerk reaction and it will pass eventually. Um, you know, high inflationary environments is another thing people are scared of, but the reality with that is too, um, after about 1974, uh, you know, there was a recession from 1972 to 1974. After that period until the early 1980s, the stock market actually performed pretty well. So stocks can do well in a high inflationary environment. So anyways, guys, I don't think this is gonna last very long. Eventually, Palantir is gonna take off again as the fundamentals just keep on getting better and better. Now, I wanna show you guys what Benzinga is saying. So Benzinga talks about the $21 mark is also a quadruple bottom in Palantir stock after bouncing from it four different times, as you can see right here. So they're saying this is basically a falling wedge and there is strong support here and that traders are recognizing the strong support at $21. And then they also go on to say that Palantir has resistance at $25. So the bulls wanna see a break above that where the bears are trying to push it below 21 is essentially the battle between the bears and the bulls right now. However, there's a little more to this. There is also a gap that uh, hasn't been filled yet at the $30 range. They're also uh, predicting that we are at some point going to fill that gap because 90% of all gaps are filled. So, you know, there's a high probability at some point this gap will be filled. And also there's been some very notable options that have occurred in the past few days. You guys can see there's some big bets in here. People betting $63 at a $20 strike price expiring May 21st. 
that's a very high risk bet. Um, you know, maybe they know something we don't know, or maybe they also feel like we're gonna have a really strong earnings report that could put us back in a bull cycle. There's been a lot of very bullish option plays. Uh, you know, this one down here, $177,000, 63,000, 72,000. People are betting a lot of money in options right now before earnings. Uh, you know, it's sometimes risky to put that much money before earnings. Um, your IV, so your implied volatility, is naturally very high and you can have an IV crush after earnings. Uh, something to be aware of. However, for this person down here, they have leaps. So this expires June 2022 and a strike of 15. This person isn't going to experience an IV crush. Uh, when you're closest to the strike price, so when the underlying stock is trading very close to the strike price, that's when the IV crush is most relevant. Now, anyways, guys, that's all I have for you in today's video. You know, it's unclear when Palantir is going to go in the next bull run. Uh, Benzinga does think it's going to be around earnings if we have a good earnings report. But the reality is until people realize this isn't the 1980s or 70s anymore, it's a completely different situation. It's different from the 1920s in that recession as well. Uh, you know, until people actually realize that this situation isn't going to be what it was back then, then I think that Palantir and most growth stocks are gonna continue to be suppressed until that fear subsides. However, it is completely unjustified in my opinion. So I would just use this opportunity as a great buying opportunity. I don't suspect we're gonna see the low 20s for very long once this all gets behind us. So anyways, guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a big thumbs up. It really helps out to grow the channel. And feel free to subscribe if you want to see more Palantir updates. I will be giving more updates, especially as we approach earnings. That's going to be a big catalyst for the stock. Anyways, really appreciate you guys watching until the end. I'll see you on the next video.